I discussed with them at first. I used to work after the institute in the Belgorod region, after the partition. How can it be? We came to liberate. From what? And they have already burned several times, dozens of animals have died. He is always civil. There were no military personnel here. During the occupation, the Russian military was here. They were there and saw that this is not a military facility. They shelled throughout the summer, until September. They were shot, the wall fell off, the cow's head fell off. The cow calves, the calf leaves, but the cow has no head. They bombed almost everything here, sheds. One, two, three. The garage is broken. A tractor, a car, they beat everything. These are calves and cows that miraculously survived the Russian occupation. Most of the animals died in the fire lit by the invaders. This is a farm in the village of Mala Rohan. The village was one of the first to be liberated in Kharkiv Oblast, back in March 2022. And then it became clear, the occupiers are fighting not only against people, but also against defenseless animals, destroying them with cruelty, which for some reason is also called animal cruelty. They came, mocked us, beat the roof, three or four times a day with a mortar. On the first day, they wanted to come here with tanks and park the cars, so they came and looked. I knew that it was a war, but I still went beyond the gates on emotions. They drove up in tanks and cars, we'll settle down here. I say, only through my corpse. He takes the machine gun, instructs, says, now there will be a corpse and we will go. They didn't do it, but I felt my first fear. It was a kind of anger, and then there was a fear that they could do it. They were beaten, smoked all the time. Then the fear caught up, they put us against the wall more than once, because I was engaged in volunteering, helping people. And so they looked, there was nowhere to put it, it was full of cattle. And they started shelling us every day. During the occupation, the farm burned down seven times. At first, four animals died, but they saved the lives of people in the village by their death. The occupiers did not let local residents out of the siege. Those who tried to escape were shot. The farmers distributed the meat of the dead animals to the villagers so that they could feed themselves. Yes, milk was distributed free of charge, which was milked by hand, because the occupiers also destroyed the milking machines. Let's just put it out, we have a barrel with water. We already understood that it would be bullying, pumped water, set it up. The barn is just starting to burn, we water it. But at the end of the occupation, the invaders, realizing that they would soon be crushed, set fire to the farm. Workers and owners risked their lives to try to save at least someone, but most of the animals were burned alive. Here some were dragged out. Can you still smell it? Yes, if they are all here. The first mortar shell hit the barn, where the ceiling heifers were standing, and the rams were there, and everything moved. Sometimes with mortars, and sometimes with a flamethrower on that barn, and there are some little mothers with piglets and calves. The wall fell off, the head fell off, the cow is calving, the calf is leaving, but the cow has no head. Well, the man broke half the wall with a tractor, and we all ready manually. We didn't listen anymore. They threw things at us, we looked already in the morning, everything was broken. 
All the people, I didn't say anything to them, rushed to save these cattle. Little piglets were thrown through the window, sows, where did they get out, and where? Half of the herd, more than 70 cows, died on the farm in Malia Rogan. And in Shostakov, on the way to Vivchansk, there are more than 2,000. The largest dairy enterprise in Kharkiv Oblast is located here. The Russians started bombing it in the first days of the war, before they captured this territory. On the 28th of February, as usual, we came in the morning to work near the cows, to milk, to feed them, and it was about 9 o'clock. It was not yet 9 o'clock. We saw planes that started to drop beans straight to the farm. There were about five planes we saw. Someone saw four, someone six. There were definitely five, and they started bombing the farm. There was no one on the farm at that time. Except for cows and agricultural workers, there were no soldiers. One boy, 21-year-old Alexander Karlama, was killed, several workers were injured, the injuries were not so significant, they were taken to the hospital in Vivchansk, and returned after some time. Well, the fact that half of the workers did not hear anything the next day and could not see well, well, if such bombs fell 50 meters from people. Probably there was a contusion, but no one diagnosed it, that's how it passed and that's it. The invaders dropped projectiles with small darts on the surrounding pastures, which dug into the legs of the animals and left wounds, which were extremely difficult to draw and rot. The Russians destroyed automatic milking machines from the air, forcing cows to die painfully. It was impossible to milk thousands of cows by hand. The milking hall was destroyed, after which we could not milk the cows at all. And the entire milking herd fell ill. Anyone who understands what it is like not to milk a cow understands. And almost a thousand cows died immediately, and in general, with further shelling, more than two thousand cows died. During the occupation, the Russians set up their base here, most of the workers left under fear of death. And when the armed forces knocked them out, the invaders left terrible traces, mines, shells, cans from under their rations and cows that died tied to mangers from hunger. The invaders did not feed them or untie them. These two stories are a mirror of crime and brutality of Russians. Not animal, the victims of which were animals. It is not just the destruction of Ukraine's resources for the sake of economic damage. It is about the senseless hatred of everything, except death, with which the Russian army is infected. They committed these crimes deliberately. They were shot here, they were kicked out. And they shot at us, they did it for evil that they were shooting at them, and they were shooting at us. I still discussed with them at the beginning. I used to work after the institute in the Belgorod region, after the distribution. How can it be? We came to liberate, from what? And they have already burned several times, dozens of animals have died. You were destroying us, as you wish, this is war. Well, don't shoot at civilians, we don't shoot at you with automatic weapons, we don't have automatic weapons. He is always civil. There were no military personnel here. During the occupation, the Russian military was here. And before that, there were no soldiers here. There were such moments after the deoccupation. The Russians were here for about two months, until the 5th of May. And the animals that remained here, on the farm, the locals, who did not leave, tried to feed them here, to put them in order. All the same, they were firing all the time, they were here and saw that it was not a military facility. 
They shelled throughout the summer, until September. Only when almost the entire Kharkiv region was liberated, only after that did they stop shelling. According to the Ministry of Agriculture of Ukraine, the Russians destroyed more than 3 million farm animals in Ukraine. Almost 6,000 are cattle. If you add the losses of private farms, the figure will increase at least twice. Currently, the owners are rebuilding their farms, despite the war nearby. Creation is closer to them than destruction. For those for whom cruelty is the creed of life, the Hague court awaits for animal abuse. The main thing is not to call this cruelty animal. Animals are not to blame.